Artifacts are quite possibly the single biggest way to take your characters in Genshin Impact to the next level. Insane artifacts means insane damage, simple as that. But artifacts can get pretty darn confusing, especially to the newer or beginner level players. So I'm gonna break down everything you need to know about artifacts right now. So let's suggest the obvious, you get artifacts by farming artifact domains, like this one right here. And each artifact domain is gonna have two different artifact sets in it. Like this one has the Viridescent Venerer, one of the best artifact sets in the game. It makes animal characters as broken as they are. And then it also has Maiden Beloved, which is just a, you know, set that helps out healers. You'll even get artifacts from doing your weekly bosses like Deval in here or doing uh, little world bosses like this, like the Anemo Hypostasis. But the artifacts you get from doing these bosses are only going to be a part of the gladiator set and the wanderers troop set anyway artifacts range from a one to five star rarity and i'm gonna say right now when you get into the late game of genshin impact when you're around ar 45 and above you are practically never going to use four star artifacts only five star artifacts so unlike characters and weapons where the four star weapons and characters are amazing meta viable they have unique you know things that they can do artifacts are not like that four star artifacts are just a worse version of a five star artifact plain and simple which is why everyone and their mother says don't farm artifacts until adventure rank 45 this is for one simple reason when you hit adventure rank 45 or world level 6 artifact domains will guaranteed drop at least one five star artifact so when you spend 20 resin you are going to receive at least one five star artifact every single time and if four stars become absolutely obsolete eventually we don't want to be spending our resin on an artifact domain that might just give us four star artifacts right so now let's dissect an artifact and all its moving parts every character can hold five artifacts a flower a plume or feather as everybody calls it a sands a goblet and a circlet you can take artifacts on and off your characters however much you like but two characters cannot hold the same artifact at the same time so taking a look at this little guy you can look right over there to the right and you'll see the artifact set but you can also open up the menu right here and search by artifact sets right here gladiators finale every artifact set has a set bonus so for gladiators finale over here on the right you can see if i am holding two gladiators finale artifacts so two of my five artifacts are gladiators i'm going to get attack plus 18 percent now if four of my five artifacts are gladiators we're going to get the bonus Bonus of if the wielder of this artifact set uses a sword claymore or pole arm it increases their normal attack damage by 35 percent pretty cool for characters that use those kinds of weapons right and also keep in mind if i'm holding four i'm still going to get that two piece bonus as well as the four piece so i'll still get the attack plus 18 percent so let's talk about the seemingly random text on your artifacts it's stats each and every artifact will have a main stat the bolded alone one at the top right over there and then it has four sub stats stats down at the bottom artifacts can be raised from level zero all the way up to level 20 which will both raise its main stat and also raise its substats power artifacts use other artifacts as experience points to level them up so to put it simply feeding your one to four star artifacts into your five star artifacts as the xp is going to be commonplace and also an artifact that has already been leveled up will retain 80 percent of its value if you feed it into another piece so if i put my level eight artifact into a plus zero one i'm going to get 80 percent of that value of exp that i put into the previous one into the new one which only 80 percent may sound like a scam but trust me guys it's totally worth it to level up these like subpar to mediocre artifacts that are going to get you by and help you you know have fun playing the game and then when you get a new one just replace it by feeding it into the brand new one that is going to be way way better now for flowers and feathers they will always have the same main stat no matter what every single flower will have flat HP as its main stat and every single feather will have attack as its main stat well X why do you always keep saying will always have well glad you asked this is where the fun begins okay for sands goblets 
and circlets, the main stat that you receive is random and it cannot be changed after you've received the artifact. And there's obviously better main stats than others for these artifacts, right? So that's where the RNG comes in. We'll get more into everything about stats and what characters are best for what stat in just a little bit, but I just got to give you guys the full basic understanding of artifacts. I don't want to overload you with too much different information. So let me summarize. Your sands can be one of five different stats. I'm going to put them on screen for you guys right now. Your goblet can be one of 11 different stats and your circlet can be one of seven different stats. So obviously there is a lot of RNG going on here. So when you get an artifact, you don't get to choose what the main stat is. But wait, there's more. So let's head back over to substats. And by the way, for this video, I'm only gonna be using five-star artifacts as my examples since they are eventually going to be the only artifacts that everybody uses. A five-star artifact when obtained will always have three or sometimes four random stats assigned to it, the substats. Once again, these stats are unchangeable. Whenever you level up an artifact, the main stat will be raised a set amount for each level. This is not RNG based at all. A level 20 attack percent sands will have the same attack value as every other level 20 attack percent sands in the game. But at every four level interval, the game will randomly choose one of your substats to get an increase. Just like pulling for a character, this is what we call rolling an artifact, right? Probably because you are rolling dice effectively, hoping that you hit and land on the substat that you want, such as crit rate or crit damage and not these useless stats, kind of like flat HP or defense for most characters. Come on, we want to do the big damage. I'll go into the best stats that you want to hit a little bit later, but what if your artifact was only three stats given to it at the beginning? Well, when you get it to level four, it will randomly assign a fourth stat to the artifact. So let's do that right now. This one is level zero. So let's Let's get it to level four. Put all these guys in. And just one more. And as you can see, we got attack as the fourth stat. Now we're gonna get into a bit more advanced artifact information now that you guys know the very basics. Just to break down a little bit more about a roll. Whenever you level up an artifact to one of the mentioned levels, one of your substats will randomly increase but also by a random amount. There are four different values for each stat when it is hit. I'll show them on screen right now. For example, the highest crit rate you can be awarded is 3.9%, while the lowest you can get is 2.7%. Let's do an example right now and it'll all make sense. So I'm gonna show you guys the value that we have right now on all these numbers, and then we're gonna compare it to the potential rolls that we could have gotten. It'll all make sense, just one second. This is a really good artifact though, so so definitely hoping we hit crit rate or crit damage here. Yes. Okay, I'm very happy. <laughs> crit rate, let's go. Okay, so it went from 2.7 to 6.2. So as you can see, we went from 2.7 to 6.2. That's a 3.5% increase. So we got the second best roll possible. The best roll would have been 3.9. We would have been at 6.6% .6 crit rate. So this is just a little bit more RNG added to the mix, meaning you can get high rolls, the better, you know, values, or you can get the low rolls. But at the end of the day, if you're hitting the stats you want, like crit rate, crit damage, you are going to be very happy whether it's a high or a low roll. Farming for artifacts can be frustrating with the rolls and stuff, but I always think once you get a good artifact, it is permanent. It will be on your account, raising your damage numbers literally forever. It's almost as frustrating as 97% of people who watch the vids on my channel not being subscribed come on that's that's a pretty staggering stat help your boy out go down there and drop a sub i'll give you a second come on all right good so what stats you want to hit with every character and artifact isn't something i can go over in this video since there are 47 characters in the game at the time of recording with many different builds and different ways to use them there's just no way i could fit all that information in here right so just check out a specific character guide for the character that you want to level up and they will give you a brief overview of what artifacts and stats your favorite character is going to want to run like my yoon jin guide right here but what i can tell you is that almost 
almost every character in the game is going to want crit rate and crit damage whenever they can. They are the most valuable stats available to us that multiply our damage numbers by a heavy amount. A crit does more damage than a normal attack, so we're going to want to crit every attack that we can. And then we can amplify that damage even further by increasing our crit damage, the amount of damage our crit is going to do. So when you see both crit stats on an artifact, you are going to be very happy. But of course, it could all go to doo doo if it gets bad rolls like some of these like this electro damage bonus goblet for my official you can see it hit defense percent way more than i would have liked if it hit crit rate and crit damage every single time except that this would be one of the best artifacts the game's ever seen but it doesn't end up like that all the time so i'm going to give a very blanket statement here i'd say that most characters want an attack percent sans an elemental goblet of their specific character type and then either a crit rate or crit damage circlet but once again it depends look up a guide on your specific character i may even have a guide out like this in the future or at the time that you're watching this video like for example my eula eula does physical damage so i've got an attack percent sand a physical damage bonus percent goblet and i'm running a crit damage circlet so taking a look at my official she scales really well with elemental mastery causing reactions all the time so we've got an elemental mastery sand a electro damage bonus goblet and a crit rate hat and so bennett being a support character he actually goes really well with an energy recharge percent sand since he wants his burst up all the time pyro damage or maybe something like hp to increase his heal on the goblet and then a crit stat here on the hat so I want to let you guys in on a little artifact RNG secret. If you've seen artifacts like this, where it has three stats and one of them is crit, 3.9% crit rate, at level four, this artifact could go from mediocre or dog to pog in an instant. That's what I like to say. So for an artifact on a juicy set that you like, I recommend leveling it up to level four and seeing if there was a secret crit rate or crit damage hiding in there, giving you an amazing artifact out of nowhere. I'm going to combo another artifact secret into this right now another big tip from me the game will always level up another artifact to level four when you feed like a level four artifact into it even with that 80 percent diminishing returns thing i don't know why it works like that but what it means pretty much is we can level up an artifact to level four see if it has that really good substat secretly in there like this one we're hoping it hits crit damage if it doesn't we could feed it into another artifact in the exact same circumstance where we want to see that fourth stat and it will just get it to level four to see that stat so we can endlessly see it over and over and over again uh just going through all of our artifacts that could potentially be insane i have gotten some fan fantastic artifacts on my account by not throwing them away checking if it has the crit damage stat and then it has crit so let's check this one right now this is the artifact we're going to feed into the other one as you can see it's just barely level four by that little bar of exp but even with the 80 percent diminishing returns it's still going to level up our artifact to four let me show you so here it is i'm gonna click it and boom you can see right there in the top right it still says plus four so we can endlessly do this and you know what let's see if we hit crit damage right now let me see if we got the YouTube video luck. Ah, right, we don't, but this artifact's still okay. Artifacts pile up over time. So I would periodically organize everything like I just explained, throwing away slash leveling up low level artifacts to find the good ones, to find that good fourth stat and to make space in your bag. Using bad five star artifacts as EXP is a great thing to do. You will soon learn then not every artifact is created equal, okay? You will eventually have hundreds of five-star artifacts and not all of them are going to be good. So don't get attached to the ones that suck because they aren't very valuable, even if they have the five-star tag and they can be used as great artifact EXP for your better ones. There's also another thing we can use these five-star bad artifacts for here at the crafting table and it's called the artifact strong box. So pretty much you can feed this strong box three five-star artifacts artifacts and receive one five-star artifact from one of the four sets listed here when this feature first came out everyone wrote it off as pretty much a scam but a lot of players smarter than i have crunched the numbers and found out that it is actually worth it to do it 
to an extent. I would only use the Artifact Strong Box on the No Blessed Oblige set. It's one of the best Swiss Army Knife support sets in the game. There are tons and tons and tons of characters that use this artifact set. And the domain that Noblesse shares artifact sets with is Bloodstained Chivalry. It is a very mediocre set at best, which means you've got a 50% chance to get a Noblesse Oblige piece or a 50% chance to get a set that kind of sucks, the Bloodstained Chivalry one. But here you are guaranteed to get a Noblesse Oblige piece. If you want a full lengthy wordy guide on this, there's a few creators that have made videos on this, such as Sucka Poco and MTAS. I think I'll uh, try to link their videos in the description. But long story short, you are trading resin, the only way to get a five star artifact for something also worth resin five star for five star if you didn't trade them in they would just be artifact exp which is a farmable resource you can pick up the little artifacts on your adventure that respawn every couple days you know you find them in boxes the gold little glitter things walking around right but you can't farm a five star artifact for free all right I wouldn't do this, however, until you've got like 10 to 15 really good artifact pieces for, you know, your main DPS characters. Use those bad artifacts as EXP for your main characters to power them up so that you can survive. Then once you've got some great ones, maybe look into starting to build up your Noblesse Oblige pieces, which you can do through the strong box. So here's another advanced topic I want to shed some light on. Now, if you were paying attention when I was talking about the stat increases happening at levels 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20, and if an artifact only has three stats assigned to it at level four it will get its fourth stat assigned to it so that effectively means that an artifact starting with four substats on it will get one more roll to their stats so in turn an artifact with four starting stats is better than a three stat artifact but please stop right there in your head i'm serious You've got to throw away that perfectionist mentality if we're thinking about these three sat artifacts sucking. They are practically exactly the same because at the end of the day, it all depends on the rolls that you get. You got to roll these crit stats, these other stats that you really, really want, or it sucks. You can pretty much just think of those four stat artifacts as they got a little bit luckier at first, but it all comes down to the rolls, okay? Just like I mentioned before, you can get some artifact that doesn't look very good, it only has crit rate, and then it gets crit damage on the level four, and then it only hits crit. That is going to be infinitely better than a four stat artifact that hit bad sub rolls. So you've got to throw away that perfectionist mentality. I'm pretty much just telling you this so that you know everything about artifacts. Finally, lads, let me touch on what I think are some of the best artifact domains in the game to farm. This is, of course, disclaimer, gonna be different for everybody and it heavily depends on what characters you have in your game, but seeing as it is a 50-50 chance to get one of the two artifact sets in a domain, it's technically optimal to farm the domains that have two good artifact sets instead of one being good and one being dog. Even with saying that, I would say that every single account with a really good Animo character, pretty much anybody who isn't Animo Traveler or Sayu, should have an amazing Viridescent Venerer set on their account. It's one of the best artifact sets in the game and it makes Animo broken. The Blizzard Shrayer Heart of Depth domain is two amazing artifact sets, but they're only used on a few select characters. So I highly recommend farming this domain if you have some of those select characters, such as Child, Ganyu, or Ayaka. This is the Tenacity of Millilith and Pale Flame domain. It kind of has the same issue as the last one, where Pale Flame is sort of only good on Eula, Razor, and Physical Kaching, or any other character that you kind of meme into a physical build, like Physical TPS, TT, or whatever. But Tenacity of Millilith is a fantastic support set on tons of different characters. Zhongli, Albedo, Kokomi, Chi Chi, Fischl, just to name a few, are really, really good users of this artifact set. So I think this is a pretty good set that most accounts should have one good set of. One of the best artifact sets in the whole game is up next in Inazuma. It's the emblem of Severed Fate and Shiminawa's uh, Reminiscence domain. So Shiminawa's four piece is really only used on a few characters, pretty much Yoimiya and Hu Tao, but the two piece is very solid. It's two piece attack bonus, very cool. But the real value here comes from the emblem of Severed Fate. It is one of the best artifact sets in the game, giving huge energy recharge and a huge damage boost along with it. It's the best in slot artifact set for Raiden Shogun, Zhang Ling, 
Shing Chu, Mona, Beto, and probably a few other characters. Its value really can't be understated. I highly recommend getting one to two full Emblem of Seven Fate sets on your account, uh, you know, if you can eventually reach that. So another beginner guide in the books from your boy. I hope you guys found this guide helpful and are ready to start farming artifacts with a little more knowledge under your belt. If you found this vid helpful or fun and you want to support the channel absolutely for free, drop a like down there. It's going to get the video out to new people. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel too. 97%. Come on. That, that, that's ridiculous. I'm making Genshin content here on YouTube and over on Twitch all the time too. So go drop a follow over there. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, gamers, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.